Hello, Go Mode Podcast community. Um, P Train here. I think I'm going to give this week's bi weekly seed a try. I figured it's only fair since I, um, I'm kind of the one who caused this. So we're just going to give this a try. And I'm going to run this. I'm going to pretend that I don't know anything about this seed. Uh, I'm going to run my standard opening. And I'm going to talk through my decisions. Uh, number one, I just talked through my decisions generally. Um, number two, uh, I thought it might be interesting for you guys to hear kind of what goes through my mind as a hover uh, and how I kind of think about seeds as a race. So here we go. We're just going to get this a trap. Um, I know that you guys use in-game time in the Discord, but I always run a timer because I'm used to running on SRL anyways, and they go by real time, so I just kind of like having it. I always started Sanctuary, and like I said, I know Boots are in Link's house, but I'm going to run this the way I always run the scene. So, I like to start off, um, I like to start off at Sanctuary and get bombs. Or, not get bombs, but try to get bombs. Uh, if I do get bombs, I typically go straight to Kakariko, which is what we're going to do right here. Uh, we don't need that. So we get the pickle. Nothing. If I get bombs, I go straight on to Kakariko. Uh, if I don't get bombs, I usually save and quit to Link's house. Save and quit to Link's house, and then take the south route to Kakariko, and I farm bombs there. Was that Ether? Okay. Ether on Aga. That's uh, kind of intimidating. We might have to do Aga for that item, but we won't know for a while. Um, on the bright side, if it's a required item, that means that everybody's going to do it. So I don't, I don't care about Aga if everybody has to do Aga. <laughs> so we got here, uh, blue rupee. Even I might should pick that up. If it was a twenty rupee, I would pick it up uh, because we do need money for bottle vendor. But the uh, we got one there. The blue rupee just to me, it's it's not enough to warrant the time it takes to walk there. For that amount of time, I could just about farm 30 rupees in Blind's basement. So I'm not going to pick up that uh, blue rupee. Now we're going down to Kakariko. I would be a very sad person in this particular seat because I am going to full clear Kakariko. Only to find Boots in Link's house. But I mean, that happens. It's... You gotta try not to let stuff like that get to you, because, you know, for every seed where boots are in, you know, let's say that we're running this exact same route, for every seed that boots are in Link's house, boots could be in this chest right here, so I'm not terribly worried about that. We are getting more bombs, which is nice. We are likely, yeah, we're definitely not gonna have to buy bombs. Almost inclined to farm bottle vendor money here. 57, we're going to get, what, 20 rupees in the well? We're going to be a little short unless we get a rupee chest. If I am short rupees, then I have a very awkward decision to make with the bottle vendor. I can either choose to skip it, or I can choose to farm the rupees. Ice ride. I'm already thinking Turtle Rock's going to be a pendant. Quake. Well, that's good. Oh, man, we just got the money. All right, cool. Just barely got the money for Bottle Vendor. Arrows aren't exciting. I kind of wish I had the $100 back, but not worth a hard reset, sure. Although we really haven't gotten anything great. We don't have a bottle, so we can't do that. Okay, I'm a little conscious of my bomb count here, so I am going to go farm some bombs. This isn't something I usually do, but I don't have money to buy bombs. 
If I had enough money to buy bombs from the store north of Hylia, I would do that. Perfect. But since we don't have the money to buy bombs, we kind of have to be a little proactive. Especially if we end up having to do mini Moldorm with bombs. We want to make sure that we're prepared for that. Alright, so I am going to peek in the library. I never see it in the library. It's just... It's too quick. And so, it's very rare that it's an item you need. So we got bombs on library. Um, I'm going to run the race game instead of scouting it. The reason why is because we've only got two items out of Kakariko. We got the Ice Rod and Quake, none of which give us immediate progression. Just bombs. I'm almost inclined to go get those, but I'm going to leave. And now we're going to get the very sad news that Boots are in Link's house. So, competitively, it's not enough to really get worked up over. But in my mind, I am thinking, alright, so now everybody who started at Link's house might have like 30 seconds to a minute over me right now. Because they had Boots throughout all of Kakarika. Um, it's not enough to to really affect my decision making right now, but it is something that I'm keeping in mind that there is a subset of people running this race that have about 30 seconds to a minute on. Me. So it's just something to keep in mind. Whenever I'm gambling, that's something I just like to keep track of. Like, let's pretend that everybody makes every decision. Who are we behind? And that's the subset of people that I'm really focused on. Since we have boots, um, I usually do this even without boots. Uh, we'll check the uh, map here. We got three crystals in the light world. Time to track and since they found it's challenging. Red Ruby, oh, we're not coming back for that. But yeah, I like to keep track of who I think we are behind. And then I like to try to figure out what I can do to bring myself um, back into a comparable position. 30 seconds isn't that bad. Because <clears throat> even if people got boots that like super early, even if people got boots super early, then, uh, 30 seconds, I might could make up with execution. You know, if there's somebody, like, really skilled, like, you know, one of the top 10 runners on SRL, and they got boots early, I'm not really worried about those people. I'm trying to focus on what I can affect and not what I can't affect. But yeah, that's definitely uh, one thing I do like to keep track of. So in my mind, I'm trying to think of, like, what might we be able to save time on. There's chance, there's a chance we could skip escape. If the seed is just super generous. Wow, that bomb was useless. It's good when they get up on the, like, on one of the edges of the screen. Because you can kind of trap them with the bomb to where even if they try to flee, they're still running into your bomb. But unfortunately, I couldn't really do anything there. This cave was absolute junk. But going back to uh, potential gambles, um, in my opinion, there are two ways you can gamble. You can either gamble to skip something, or you can gamble, you know, what they call like galaxy brain plays, where you make a play that's so crazy it just might work. Uh, I tend to gamble the latter. That's a horrible dash. Uh, dashes are only effective if you're going, I think, farther than 4.5 tiles. So that dash was uh, short. It took me longer to charge the dash uh, than the time I saved by moving at a faster speed. But when I'm gambling, I tend to favor skipping stuff over galaxy brains. Uh, I dashed out on the edge of that pit there. 
Um, I don't want to go back and demonstrate it because technically I am running this like a race. But because I dashed at the edge of that pit, I have now armed the water wall. So this is a route that I like to run. I don't know if it's good or not. I enjoy running this route. So what I do is I arm the water walk. I check these chests, which is a bit of a gamble without the moon pearl, because if you get a heart refill, uh, you will be put into the swim state and you can't get out of it. Granted, you still could come out and do like hobo and stuff like that. But to me, the advantage of this route is that you get to... Uh, you get to dash through all this. Like, it's actually faster to sequence break it in this manner than it is to check it in logic. So, and we got half magic, which is really nice. So we got to scout the Hylia Island, so we know we're not coming back from that. And we'll see what we get here. Our piece. Not particularly exciting, but whatever. They can't all be winners. Um, now this is a bit of an awkward decision. I'm going to go with front of escape. We have five bombs. Can we do anything with five bombs? We're, we'll just gamble it, whatever. I think five bombs is just what we need. Let's see, two, three, four, five, and then use pots for ball and chain. We've gotten one item out of the sanctuary. So the map and key are still fair game, so we might not have to do the dark cross. We don't know yet. A glove. So, glove doesn't really give us anything right now. But it is part of the Dark World formula. I almost want to do back of escape before doing front of escape, but here we are. Hey, there we go. I was hoping maybe one of those were in the prize backup. Since this is a technically a customizer seed, um, the prize packs are shelf. So if you were playing a preset, or if you basically rolled the seed using the website as opposed to the customizer, uh, the prize packs, they would be shuffled, but like the enemies would still be in their same prize pack. Uh, let's see if I remember this strat. Yeah, I got rid of that bomb way too late. Well, it's a good thing that we found an extra bomb. So what was I saying here about check back this game? I was saying something before we got there. I just want I, ironically I stopped because I didn't want to mess up the mob strat, but I ended up doing that anyways. Oh yeah, I was talking about prize packs. Um, the way prize packs work in the regular game, um, I like to get hit by this guard before the bomb goes off because the guard deals half hard of damage. The bomb deals a full hard of damage. So um, the way vanilla prize packs were, or the way the prize packs work in the actual randomizer is that uh, the prize packs still exist, right? So in the vanilla game, you have a magic prize pack, you have a bomb prize pack, and they all belong to specific en enemies. Um, those enemy groups still exist, those prize packs still exist, but they're shuffled. So the one enemy group may not have the same prize pack that it has in the vanilla game. But that prize pack is still intact. So, fortunately nothing here. I could death warp to the dark cross, but I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to check bonk rocks into the back of escape because we can leave bonk rocks. We can't leave back of escape. Uh, one thing I try to do to save time, um, because I'm going to the back of escape and I'm likely saving and quitting, I'm not bothering to refill my magic or refill my health at the old man. I had a sword, that'd be a bunch of dash. A lot of times I'll refill my health when I don't need to, and it's just a time waste. Fire Rod. Okay, so now the back of escape is in logic. If we're lucky, the small key is there.
See what we got. Oh, there's a small key. Alright, so let's go check what this item is. Luckily, we do have the fire rod, so this won't be that bad. I would never, ever attempt this room in the dark without a fire, without a sword or fire spruce. You do want to be a little careful with how you hit the rat. You can hit it behind the torch. And if you hit it behind the torch, uh... If you hit it behind the torch, you won't be able to grab the key. There we go. I think I might have been facing an angle there. There we go. A bottle. I'm not going to check that yet. I hate to say it, but we will probably last location. Oh, did I just do Sanctuary? I want to do Easter. Better pick up a bomb, because we are running low. Yeah, that's... It's generally a bad idea to try to cash through there without a sword. Um, sometimes the guards will play nice, but obviously that didn't happen, but that's okay. We can get health coming up here at Sahatrala. I just realized I don't have my input here on. You guys might enjoy seeing more buttons that I'm pressing. There's a green pendant. Ice pounds. Okay, that's cool. I want to leave one of these to, to block my bomb. That was a horrible uh, order. It was not a very fast way to pick up the bots. We have a pearl. Pearl, but still no hammer. We either need a hammer or a glove. Hopefully we find a hammer. Um, getting mitts for Dark World access is one of my least favorite things in the world. Also, diving eastern without a bow is one of my least favorite things in the world. That was a bad dash. So one fun fact about this, and in the Go Mode podcast, they actually mentioned this, it is always faster to walk up here. Even if you have the boots, it's faster to walk through the cannonballs. Whoops. If you bonk like that, though, it doesn't matter. That skeleton, a little bit of room to get out of my way. Probably should have dashed out of there. Mitts for Dark World access. It feels amazing. So now we have kind of a peculiar situation here. You could argue that you leave Eastern in this scenario. I'm not a huge fan of leaving Eastern. I wouldn't. These bombs are killing me. Um, even if... Even if I didn't know anything about the seed, I would probably still stay here. Knowing what I know about the seed, the fact that there's only one bow in the world, to me it makes Eastern, it makes staying at Eastern even that more valuable because. E Is that the big key? Yeah, big key. Um, compass. Yeah, so there might be an item in this dark room. So I guess we check it. I love skipping this chest. I love, love, love skipping this chest. They can't do that in good conscience right now. This might be a sunk cost fallacy. Um, these boots us here to find out where I am. Put the heart. Now we're back. 
I guess we dodged that Popo. Fair enough, I won't complain. This might be a sunk cost fallacy, but I have, like, I, in essence, I feel like I'm kind of clearing a pendant dungeon right now because it's a crystal dungeon that I can't do, like. Well, we did get the last item, at least. So there's that. Uh, we'll start at Sanctuary. For me, like, the, when I dive a crystal dungeon that I cannot full clear, I almost feel like it's a pendant dungeon because you're spending a dungeon's worth of time in something that you can't full clear anyways. So anytime I gamble, like, let's let's pretend that we're talking about an actual crystal, uh, pendant dungeon. Um, That's, uh, that's special. Okay. Makes Graveyard Ledge a little weird. But, um, anytime I'm diving a Pendant Dungeon, it feels weird to gamble on a Pendant Dungeon. I just realized that my desktop volume has been on this entire time. You've probably been hearing an echo, so I apologize for that one. Um, it should be fixed now, but I'm going to check this kid first. It feels weird to gamble on a pendant dungeon, but then not full clear that. So it's like a, it's almost like a nested gamble. You have this one gamble, and then you have a gamble within that gamble. It's like, okay, I'm going to gamble on this pendant dungeon, but I'm also going to gamble that this one chest in this pendant dungeon doesn't have what I'm looking for. To me, that that's... We have minutes, not I am. Uh, for me, that's a little weird. It's a weird way to run a seat. I don't like doing that. Um, so if I'm diving a dungeon that I might not have to do anyways, I tend to full clear. Let's see what our Dark World map looks like. Remember when I said uh, Turtle Rock would be a pendant? Pendant Swamp. Okay. So, what is it? Uh, Thieves Town and Mire. A little bit longer than I spent on track, but we had to. Um, so right there, Pendant Swamp, I'm thinking I might have a chance here. This might be a hover seat. Um, that's already starting to get into my psyche. So I instantly want to prioritize anything that, uh, anything that requires a hook shot. We got Canis Mario, which does unlock blind. I don't know if I want to do Thieves Town without a hammer or no. Let's not. We have mirror. It's not that bad to, to get back here. In particular, I would like a sword. If I had a sword, I might actually do these down without a hammer, but uh, not too keen on doing this without a sword as well. Anyways, we'll leave the skull. We'll leave by way of the skull, so that way uh, we don't get the timer. We don't get the guy yelling at us. Uh, let's go ahead and do like some stuff. There's really no reason not to do it. I mean, obviously, if there's not progression here, it's slow. We also kind of orphan the hammer pegs, but we're already holding off on Thieves Town for a hammer. So we're, we're really like, when we come back to this area, we'll, we'll lump this in with Thieves Town later. So we're not, we're not orphaning it yet. We are putting it off. Though. Same with Thieves Town. A lot of times I'll dive the first four Thieves Town, but eh. The odds of there being a sword and a hammer in there is kind of slim to none, so. 
Oops, I missed the quick hop. That's embarrassing. And we don't have the hook shot, so we will have to walk the purple chest. What we know is that there is no hook shot. Not one that we're going to want to get anyways. Don't care about the big 20. Although we are like drastically close to uh, Zora money. Can leave the purple chest, so this is a glitch that uh, recently came to light. You just leave the purple chest, I don't care. This jerk. Of course you come over here, and I have nothing to fight you with. That's annoying. <laughs> I was really hoping that wasn't a bop. I'm glad it wasn't. Alright, so now I usually get right above the skull and mirror. And we still get the item. This is a bit of a dangerous dash without a sword. We got through it just fine. We don't have flippers or the hammer, so this will be the end of our path here. And there's our hammer. Perfect. So we have the hammer. Oh yeah, and we have lamp. I've got to mark that. So now I'm immediately thinking like, wow, there's a ton of stuff on Death Mountain. But we can't do an item dash because we don't have a sword. There's a ton of stuff on Death Mountain. Also, other people, because keep in mind, right, there's Pendant Swamp, we don't have a hookshot. Um, if there's something behind the hookshot that I can get before the hookshot is necessary, it might be advantageous to us. So I'm thinking, man, people might actually be putting off Death Mountain, hoping to get the hookshot before going up there. Uh, okay, we don't know what's on a ledge or like that. So for now... I could go to Pod, but I don't have a bow yet, so I'm not excited about that. Um, also, there might be a bow on Dark Death Mountain, so, or Death Mountain, we don't know. Um, of course, this seed, we do know. We know that there's a progressive bow in Bookshot Cave. Uh, but nobody else really knows that. And we, we wouldn't know that in a regular seed. can also take this opportunity to do Zora. Kill that guy. I think they dealt two hearts damage. Pick up this bush. Has a 50-50 chance of dropping a heart. We did get it, so that's nice. Um, when you throw the bush, it's a nice idea to bonk up against that wall and then stay still whenever Link hits the ground. It gets what's called a quick warp, which means you warp uh, much faster between worlds. I don't need those bombs. I have ten. Thank you, though. So we won't be able, we we have we're, we can sequence break the Zora ledge. Obviously, we're not set up to do that right now. We won't have to come back anyways. Uh, now we can check Zora, and we're done with this area forever. So this works out to be a very nice route for us. Uh, we don't have flippers, so we will have to dash through here. This is like one of the hardest screens of the game to optimize. This screen just sucks. Yay, we got more arrows. How awesome. Alright, so now I'm going to the mountain. Um, 
you could also argue to do blind or do thieves town as well and you wouldn't be wrong uh, it's not a bad idea to prioritize crystals uh, to a certain extent uh, some people will put off Ice Palace, hoping to go load it. Some people will put off Swamp, hoping to go load it. But I don't really... I can do Thieves Town without a hammer. We have enough health to make it work. And we have Kana Samaria, so there's that too. Uh, but we just have so many items up here. Like, yes, it's a good idea to clear Crystal Dungeons first. But also, there's so much item density up here, and there are so many items we could get that would help us. Uh, I don't want a shield. Mark that real quick. There's so many items up here that could help us. Like, if we find a sword, uh, if we find a sword, blind fight is free. Uh, we need all dead rock. Oh my gosh, are we going to live up the mountain? <laughs> we might not survive. Also, you can say, like, oh, it'd be a good idea to clear, um, clear Thieves Town. Hera is a crystal as well, which is something I really should have mentioned. So it's not like we're completely ignoring our crystal dungeons or over Mamos. Uh, I will get that. This is a hover seed. I'm probably breaking the cardinal rule by being somebody who can hover who's not hovering that gap. Um, it's a bad idea to hover to this item because the time you waste if you fall is not worth the time you save. It's not comparable at all. Um, this is kind of close. I mean, I could do the... Real quick. So I could do the bomb jump back across and it's not a bad idea to do so. Um, for me, it takes me long enough to line it up that it feels like a time loss. So I like to hover if I have boots in. But it is a bad idea to fall. Like, so if you fall there versus the bomb jump, or if you fall there versus walking out, the time is not so different. But if you hover to that item and you fall and then you have to walk all the way back up the mountain, just to get the item and then you still have to get back it's just way 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 too long it's not worth the time you save is not worth the time you risk so we will have to do care of um this is something that this isn't something i've really thought a whole lot about if you don't know where the hook shot is, you might can make a case for leaving Hera. You might can make a case for leaving Hera, hoping you find the hook shot on Death Mountain. But also, if if I'm a non-hover, I'm thinking, but I also have hook shot game, so I don't want to put myself on Death Mountain without the hook shot. You know, if it was in Hera the whole time. So, for me, I think clearing Hera is the decision to make, whether you're a hover or a non-hover. But, um, I couldn't argue if you wanted to leave Hera in hopes of coming back with a hookshot. As long as you clear Hera while you're on Death Mountain, I think you're good. Um, it's not the decision I would make to leave it, but I think it's a defensible position, to be sure. Menu, man. Menus are tough. Oh yeah, and we do have one item. That's another thing, especially the fact that we've already gotten one item out of here. I think leaving is a defensible play. It's just not a play I like to make. It's like chess. Some people like the Roy Lopez. Some people like the Italian opening. One's not necessarily better than the other. Uh, maybe, you know, showing my ignorance there. Ooh, we don't have... Uh, Oh, well, we don't, doesn't matter. Like, we don't have a sword. I can't do spin buffers here. Uh, can I do this? Got our second item. But yeah, 
one chest opening is not necessarily some are objectively better some of them are just equal some of them are just different and some you will like some you will not like and that's fine no not like that okay that's fine i'll take that one uh we are running a well we got a fairy now so this is that oh wow how i did not take damage from that guy i don't know all right moldorm I tend to dash a little bit lower than what is necessary there, in hopes of freezing Moldorm, which kind of allows me to get back on there. I almost walked into Moldorm, but uh, by freezing Moldorm, it kind of allows you to get onto the platform safely. First crystal. 35 minutes in. We can actually do an item dash here because we're not. I mean, we missed, but. Get this fairy just in case. It's gonna fly out of my reach. Well, good thing we freed the fairy. Yeah, even if we had missed. It, like, even. You can't do item dashes. Man, I'm. Up a wolf here. Uh, I'd rather not use my fire rod. Yeah, you can't do an item dash without the sword for whatever reason. It just bonks instead. Uh, but that one didn't matter because you stop it early, and ideally you hammer the peg by stopping the dash. Unfortunately, that did not happen. See, so what are we from go mode? We, we're a flute from go mode. We're both from go mode. Uh, because I have... So number one, I have the mirror. So I can mirror in front of here. And get both of these in one fell swoop. Whoops. That's the way you want to do it, though. Because I have the mirror, I'm going to come up here and do this. Because uh, I can mirror here. Oh my god, this video is killing me. <laughs> I'm so bad at this video. I can mirror here, I can do Paradox and Super Bunny right here. Um, also, I don't have a sword, so even if there, there's a 66% chance I have the Turtle Rock stuff that I need. Um, hey, we got a sword. So now, now it would make sense. Now it would make sense to chance the uh, Turtle Rock portal. But before it wouldn't have, because we didn't have a sword, we could value anyways. Dude, chill out. My gosh, this is the worst thing I've had in very long. so... What does that put us from go mode? We can just drop here because we got the portal. Uh, with the flute, that puts us bow from go mode. We don't take the, we don't need flippers at all, actually. I think that puts us in bow mode. Bow mode and sword mode. Sword, we need a sword. Uh, mirror. Nothing particularly useful there. Quick, so we could do Turtle Rock if we want to. In this situation, I would be inclined to not. Um, I'm gonna cane a Samari out here because we do want to kill these guys. Mushroom. Whoops. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm gonna hover. Uh, and hope that something useful is here. 
uh, sit up here because I won't mess this hover up. Sword. So that's one less item for Gobo. There's a three pixel window in which that bonk works. Ooh, Bo. So that is Go mode. Of course, we knew that. Whoops. We knew those items were there. So now I have like a really awkward decision. How hard do I really want to go for this chest? Um. A sword would be nice. An extra bow would be nice. Park container would be nice. At this point, just save and quit. I don't know what I'm doing. So now we're basically we're we're in go mode. Just gotta go beat dungeons. So even for a hover seed, this is really fast. Oh, we, we didn't even check Meyer. Need to check Meyer. If Meyer... Oh, wait, no, we know where the other medallion is. Ether's on Lumberjack. So that would be, like, the most annoying thing that could happen right now is that, uh... We need to go kill, uh... Oh yeah, and I have Mushroom. Most annoying thing that could happen right now is... We have to go kill a Haga. I'll do a little dash turn right there, just so I can, uh, easily get the quick hop. It's Bombo, so we are in officially go official go mode here. Officially go mode. We're in officially go mode. This is very much a hover seed. Like this is fast even for a hover seed. This is the dream right here. We'll go ahead and do Meyer. It would be nice to have a little bit more equipment, but uh, even if we had Tempered Sword, I don't know that we'd have enough health to do the, uh, the 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 NMG strat. And we have Cape, so we're we have more than enough firepower to kill Vitrius. It'll be a slower fight, but it'll be a safe fight. We have to worry about dying. So earlier, I was talking about subsets of people that we might be behind. Uh, in terms of those subsets... Yeah, what are you going to do there? In terms of those subsets, I mentioned that we were probably about 30 seconds behind uh, people who started at Uncle. We would also be behind people who opted to leave Eastern after the Mitts. Now we're pretty much ahead of all those people. Now it's between me and Hover. Let's see, let's see. Let's talk. So if that was a big key, I could just hover to the left right there, but we're, we're not going to do that. We'll see where this big key is. Not there. So the very next chest we will check, I think, is the compass chest. It's with the uh, blue switches in front of it. We check that. We're we're gonna do everything we can to skip the cuts in the chest. And the reason why um, cutscene chest takes forever. And the only way we have to go back and check that is if the big key is there. And so, well, now we don't even have to worry about it. I used to check the lobby chest first before checking that. Um, but now I've started checking that chest first. It works much better. If that chest has a small key, um, the chest below it has to have the big key. So it just kind of saves time to check that. Now we get to do Spooky Glitch. We armed this when we entered the Dark World portal. Because we stood below the rock and picked it up, 
the bird left the screen on a specific pixel. Uh, the, that, or a specific variable. The bird's height creates a specific variable that happens to be shared with Fire Rod. So when we laid that Samaria block down, we dashed as we set it down, which prevents that variable from being overwritten. And now we have stored a variable that is shared with the splash damage on our fire rod. So it basically allows us to hit stuff way above where our fire rod is. Oops. There we go. I forgot to slash that skeleton, so we were a little slow there. Whoa, that was a weird. Yeah, we deserve that. <laughs> Two very poorly executed screens. We should still have enough magic to make this happen. Just cut on the cape and spam the B button, and the lag from the game will prevent your magic from going down, which is really nice. It's probably something else other than lag, but I just. I'm not that smart in the game, so. Yeah, we have not found any items. This is not an item, so... The one question I have to ask myself right now is how hard... Do... Man, we get to go mode thieves now. How many seeds do you get to go mode thieves now? That's insane. We didn't touch a pendant dungeon. These pendant dungeons are kind of nasty, too. We can just go through the front door, but I think it's faster to, to do this. The better mirror spot, that's for sure. The main question I have to ask myself is how hard do I want to look for a tempered sword? Um, we do have a bottle with the fairy in it. We have a bottle. Do we have another bottle or do we just have the bottle with the fairy in it? Do we have two bottles of fairies in it? I think we just have the one bottle. So I could go swap that out for a um a blue potion. So that would allow us to be a little bit more aggressive with Ganon uh, if we have a blue potion. We'd use the cape. Get some good old spins in there. Or I could just search for tempered. Uh, we don't know where the big key in GT is going to be. So there's a good chance we could pick up a sword in GT. We don't know. Um, one thing that we have to consider when we're searching for swords is what are the odds that a sword is out there in the world somewhere. So, or what are the odds that a sword is where I'm going to check? So one thing that I'm considering, right? So like right now, let, let's say Checkerboard Cave. Checkerboard Cave is pretty out of the way for what we're going to be doing right now. We're in Goma. Do I really want to waste all that time checking Checkerboard Cave? Let's look at what else is on the map. In addition to GT, we have all the items in Turtle Rock. We have all the items in Swamp Palace. And we have three items in Ice Palace. We have a lot of overworld checks left. Um, the odds of there being a sword in Checkerboard Cave right now is kind of low. We also have to do Pod, which has five items in it. Uh, we also have to clear GT, which has a ton of items in it. So there, there's really, like, there, there's a lot of places that could have a sword that's not Checkerboard. Oh, I haven't hit that at all. Well, that was a super sloppy land though. That's what I get for trying to talk with the at the same time. We didn't get one item. But yeah, so the odds of there being a sword in Checkerboard Cave. We also we left in, we left two items in Mire, so that's a thing. Um, there's Bumper Ledge, Spike Cave. There, there are a lot of items left on the map. So the odds of Checkerboard Cave having a sword, a sword are slim to none. Um, the odds of any location having a sword... Uh, we have myths. I keep forgetting this. The odds of any location having a sword are kind of slim to none until we start to whittle down the map. Um, but until that moment, I'm just going to clear dungeons. Uh, I will probably full clear the first four thieves. I don't know. It depends on where we get the big key. If 
you nudge up against that rail, if you pull it a little bit to the left or to the right, uh, you'll actually nudge up against that wall, and it will reduce the speed that Link is... Uh, not the speed, but it'll reduce the distance that Link rolls backwards. Uh, you can use that to the to your advantage if the uh, pose are not being favorable. Alright, so we got a big key. I think we go... Didn't have to go solo there, that was a mistake. That's not a key dash, so we'll have to walk. If you nudge up against that torch, you'll actually get a key dash. You can just do a dash turn and uh, dash through the door, but because I missed the torch a little bit to the left, I did not have that option. Uh, the star RNG there, it did not matter if I got the God Pixel or not, that star was going to hit me either way. We did find one item at these time. I think our first item was a heart piece. This is going to be a very low percent GT, unless I find something useful. Ideally, a tempered sword. So this rat is moving left, right, so I'm going to drop a bomb, slash up. I use the menu to, uh, to scout that. Menu as soon as you walk into the room, and you can see which direction that rat is. If it goes left or... what else? If it goes left, I'm sorry, if it goes right, it went right. If it goes right or up, then I slash upward to prevent myself from getting wrecked by that rat. Those rats hit like a truck in this dungeon. Uh, also, I should have been a little bit more careful with that fireball. I think you can get past the rat if it goes up, but I still slash. If it goes right, you definitely have to slash to get the rat out of your way. Might as well check that, it's literally right there. So, this is one thing I have to consider. Almost everybody else... Oh, budge. Almost everybody else probably checked those first four chests. So, if there's a sword there, I'm behind. But also, the only reason I have Master Sword right now is because I hovered. So, there's also that consider. Alright, we've done Thieves Town. Now we can do Skull Woods. Can we combo Pod Meester? And we're on our way to GT. Hopefully the pod big key plays nice. Really, that's kind of the, the pod big key and the GT big key are really the determinant factors on how fast we finish the city right now. I knew that. If that uh pig guy, whatever his name is, if he stands on the corner of those paths and throws a sphere up, uh whoops. Oh no, that's not where you want to go. I was wondering. That sucks. Well, might as well check some of these chests. By some, I mean that one. Gosh, that was embarrassing. That's honestly never happened. That's what's supposed to happen. That's a time loss. Also, all these bonks. But, because we did get that key, we can at least skip the, uh, mummy. There's a menu there, so you can dash all the way over. So you can gauge if you cleared the spike or not. Whoop. That would be awkward. If we, uh, did not have half that. Oh, uh, jerk. Nothing you can really do except for wait for that fire bar if it goes left. Did 
get that hand a little bit of time, because that hand can grab you out of a pit. It's a little risky to shoot the fire rod when he's up against spikes. But sometimes you can get the splash damage to knock him back down. One item. Alright, so now we do Pod and Easter. It really doesn't matter what order you do them. I'm going to do it in Pod because that does save me a couple of mirror transitions. But really, you can do them in either order. There is part of me that wants to go get some safeties, but I want to hold off and see what I get out of Pod first. Because if I get Tempered Sword, then we're just going to wing it. I'll do, I don't care about my health if we get Tempered on Master Sword, though, it does matter a little bit. It's because things take... Like, the, the, really, the, the Gauntlet is a war of attrition. You have to kill things faster than they kill you because you're going to take damage. Um, there are going to be some rooms that go poorly in GT. You just have to outlast GT. Uh, if you have Tempered Sword, that's really easy to do because you kill everything in one hit. With Master Sword, the, the Red Zyzax in particular. Oh no, I missed Kiki Dash. Do you see how slowly Kiki walked up there? Uh, normally, you menu to the mirror and then juke, so it snaps Kiki right on top of you so he doesn't have to walk as far. Um, that was slow as butt, because I missed my Kiki Dash. But anyway, the goal of GT is just to outlast it. I mean, you want to do it quickly, but really, you just don't want to die, you know? It's really easy to do with a tempered sword. It's really hard. It's harder to do with a master sword. Fighter sword GT is the worst. Let's see. And because this is hover speed, I'm definitely going to do. I mean, I do this anyways. This and the the nightly. Oh, we found another bow. So for everybody else, that's their first bow, which is fun. Uh, yeah, that was going hard with. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. What? He's not moving. First off, I'm going to get a bomb. Now I'm definitely losing time. Arm of the chair is getting him away. There we go. This is where Hovering loses time. Like, all that time is lost. I don't really know what was going on there. I have hovered a bit today. Maybe my arm is... Oh, we don't have a key! Oh, this is a horrible idea. That's right, because we got the bow. That's time I lost against everybody, because nobody else is doing that. Go for it. That would have been a really quick, uh, really quick thing to do. Let's see. We do want these hearts so we can save ourselves a menu. And you'll see that in the next room, provided I can keep the hearts. So now with silvers, I feel a lot better about the Ganon fight, obviously. I still think we're going to pick up a blue potion. I still think I'm going to pick up a blue potion just in case, but, uh, yeah, silvers are going to make the Ganon fight a lot smoother, because we don't have to do the silverless strats. Spin to win. So now, because we grab those hearts, because we have full health, 
um, we will be able to use sword beams there and save ourselves to be that's like three point something seconds that's one reason why I stopped hovering when I did worried about dodging the fireball because I have silvers and it works out just as well because uh it works out just as well because if he shoots a fireball that means he's standing still so I'm fine with that let's see we found two items of pied and we killed the beast the mini to the mirror earlier but I didn't sometimes you can get a dash all the way up through the cannonballs but you just have to hope that works out there's no way you can really read that Generally, you don't want to dash this short, but since you already have to slash the skeleton, you might as well dash through the skeleton, in my opinion. Sword beams in that room, so we can dash up. Here's another place where I'll use a menu buffer to try to get a flush up the stairs, which I paused way too late there. But. Sometimes I'll pause right there to try to make sure I'm lined up uh, vertically with the stairs. With doors and generally everything, you want to try to enter it flush almost always. You don't want to nudge up against walls. You don't want to nudge against door frames. You'd be amazed. Like you would be actually astounded on how much time you could lose to bad doors. Should be an easy fight. Alright, now we're going to Ganon. It's going to be a really good time. Really, really good time. But we knew it was going to be a hover scene, so... I like doing the item dash with loot. Um, I did want to go get a potion because we do still have math potion. We have two fairies. You don't need two fairies. I keep one fairy and then get a blue potion. One fairy just in case the Ganon fight gets away from us. Uh, wanted to talk to that person. And no hearts whatsoever. Seriously? At this point, I'm just gonna save and quit. Whatever. I think it's faster in trying to figure out the blue to dodge everything. And we get the full health. We don't have hook shot, so we do have to go up. Actually got a spin speed. I'm notoriously bad at getting spin speeds. We get in that portal eventually. I might should have turned in the mushroom while I was there. 
Might should have done that. That's what that hammer dash is supposed to look like. Uh, sometimes those guys are a little bit nice for me to come from our left. Uh, was, well, it doesn't matter here. Generally, you want to come up Super Bunny Cave if you haven't opened up this portal already, but that's also if you have the hook shot. Which we do not, so... Ah, to rock. It feels wonderful not to step foot inside it. Um... That hurt. They do not respond to a Master Sword at all. So you absolutely have to have a Hammer, Tempered Sword, or better. Could have caped, but eh, whatever. Alright, so this is the route I like to run in GT. Some others do it, some don't. I call this the Short Dark Magician. I think it, some people call it the Pink Magician, because PKR was the person that I think first started doing this. But, eh, I don't know. Uh, one awkward thing about this, because we don't have Hookshot, we either have to do Bomb Jumps or Hover. Which, knowing where the hookshot is, this is a bad idea. But, in a real game, we wouldn't know where the hookshot is anyways. So this would be time that we're losing against everybody else, probably. Skip in tower room because who wants to do tower room? Oh, that's bad. Hopefully, we still make it. Probably not. Wow. Again, talking about that war of attrition. You want to get through Ganon's tower before it can kill you. We're not doing a great job. Why am I throwing a bomb? Pick up the magic just in case. There's the big key, but I do want to open up these chests in case they get something useful. Got nothing. Alright, we are out. Like I said, we do have silver, so all is not lost. <coughs> We're still going to end up with a really good time. Let's see. I might could run that room a little conservatively. Since I'm so low on health, but there is a refill room coming up here. I'm probably going to take advantage of, unless these guys want to open me up with some health. By health, I mean like a fairy. That might be part of the magic pack, so... Oh wait, no, this is customizer. That doesn't apply. <coughs> Excuse me. magic or whatever. Oh, well. I got sucked into that door. I did not try to go through that door.
Oh my gosh, we've already lost so much health. Bemos is being a jerk. There we go, we got it. For these, I'm probably just going to use Fire Rod. I hit the A button there, but it did nothing. That was very favorable uh, movement from the Zyzak there. <coughs> Excuse me again, sorry. Got some phlegm in my throat. For here, I like to do a little dash up for Nort. It also gives me a good vertical lineup. You have to be a little careful with the timing of the fireball. You can't just run straight in there. Got a mark red boomerang. What am I thinking? It is the worst boomerang now. Ooh, that was a dangerous dash. That's a horrible dash. Never do that dash. Dash straight upwards, by all means. But, uh... Do not dash to the right there like I did. That's not how you do that room fast. I just messed up. <laughs> no! That's bad. Shovel! I wonder what could be behind the shovel in this seed. Uh, I am going to kill Moldorm because I'd rather not do Master Sword Ganon than if I could help. Also, we dashed through Moldorm, which is a really bad idea. You still have to hover, though. Container is appreciated, but not necessary. Um, I have had people ask me, uh, does killing Moldor make hovering harder? It adds lag to the game. I don't know how that affects inputs. I don't like killing Moldor because if anything, it may like even if it makes hovering easier, I don't have to try. Even if it makes hovering easier, it makes it longer. Which means you have to keep up the rhythm for longer, which I don't like. Let me get the cape out. Alright, so 12 spins per phase. Six. Ooh. 
That's gonna be about done. Okay, so let's take a look at this and see what we might could have done differently. Make sure my tracker is up to date here. We got all the overworld locations that we checked. Yes. So let's take a look at the tracker. This is how things ended up. Uh, we left a lot on the map. Uh, number one, we even got the go mode Thieves Town, which I never ever get to do. Even in most other teams, I don't get it. Um, so that was super nice. We did get Shovel. Uh, anything else we got? No, that was it. So we never found Flippers. Never had to, uh, which is really nice. Um... Didn't have to find flippers, didn't have to find hook shot. Uh, we did end up finding silvers in pod, which was really nice. Uh, that bow really could have been anywhere. It was kind of nice that that was put in a crystal dungeon. Um, all in all, I was really happy with the seed. I thought it played nice. Um, I tried, I did my best to play it um, without letting the foreknowledge influence me. Um, obviously, like I knew that there was a sword and bow in hook shot cave. I knew that Shovel was in Moldorm 2, which led to Hookshot. Uh, I knew Boots were in Link's house, but like I said, I tried not to let any... I, I opened with my standard opening. I always start at Sanctuary. If I get bombed, to go straight to Kakariko. Uh, that's just how I route open seats. That's how I like to route. Uh, all in all, I thought the seat was very fun. I mean, that's... Obviously, I can hover, so I guess that's why it was fun for me. But, um... I don't know, I mean, this is definitely one of those seeds, like, the, the odds of this happening is slim to none, but this would definitely be one of those seeds that, uh, yeah, you would, if you can't hover, you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, there were a couple of things that could have made this easier. Um, one, uh, Godmire. We did not get Godmire. Uh, if the big key was in the first chest, that would have been great. Uh, what else, in terms of hover, uh, if I'd gotten the pod hover, I've gotten that hover like the past three times I've done it. I don't know why tonight was just weird. Um, what else? All in all, the seed worked pretty nice. I mean, you got hammer exactly when you wanted it. Uh, we skipped Thieves Town, which was nice. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of mitts for Dark World access, but when hammer's right there, it's kind of hard to, uh, to be upset about that. In terms of swords, maybe I should have checked the front four of Thieves Town. Maybe I should have turned in Mushroom while I was getting a potion. I don't think I should have dug around in Skull Woods. I don't think you mess around in Fire. With the big key where it was, you don't mess around in Desert. I don't regret skipping Checkerboard. I don't regret skipping Hammer Pegs. Maybe I should have scouted Graveyard Ledge. Not Graveyard Ledge, uh, Bumper Ledge. Maybe I should have scouted that, because if that was Tempered Sword, I definitely would have gotten that on the way to the mod. Uh, why did I not do it, though? Let's 
So I didn't do the front of Skull Woods. Why did I not do... Maybe I just plan on coming back there. I almost always do Skull Woods. Did I do the Mummy Ring? Am I, did I do it and I just forgot? Surely I didn't do the mummy room and then just like forget to do the rest of it. Skull Woods is the black hole of my memory right now. It's like 1.30 in the morning. I'm, and I just raced uh, the daily, so I went from the daily to this. But yeah, um, I don't remember doing anything in Skull Woods. But I felt like I had to have. I don't know. In any case, this seed worked out very nice. Um, in terms of subsets of people you know obviously i felt ever so slightly behind um getting the boots and links house after kakariko so one of the things that i could have done to offset that was to skip the anti-fairy chest which i excuse me which i might have done if i could have cleared easter but without the ability to clear easter i just felt like hey we're already here Let's go ahead and check and see if we can find that last item, which we were able to, which didn't really affect this seed that much. But anytime you can get rid of all the items so that you know, like, okay, I never have to come back here until I'm in go mode, uh, that's really nice to be able to do. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Skipping pod to do... When do we get mushroom? Excuse me, I gotta yawn. When did I get mushroom? Mushroom might have been. It wasn't thieves now. I don't know exactly when we got mushroom, but I'm trying to think. I don't think we could have routed that in with Zora. I think that came later. Excuse me, I'm trying not to be on. Probably going immediately to bed after this. But uh, all in all, it was a really nice seed. I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it was a hover seed, so I feel like I, I guess I can kind of say that. But uh, I don't know. This definitely was a seed that, um, if you are looking to learn hovering, this is the primary reason why you'd want to do that. Um, there's no real way you can get around. Like, no matter how much you got route, you're not getting around that shelf looks up. Alternatively, you could learn to mold on bounce. Um, that is a... Ask Cassidy Moen about that. He's, I think he's done all the research he can on how to perfect the mold on bounce. But uh, it's not tech that I'm good at. I don't know how to do it. If it ever comes up in a race, I will take that L. If there's a seed that completely buries the, the boots and the hook shot. To where the only way to get a competitive time is the Moldorm bounce. I'm happy to take that loss. And really, that's that's what you have to, uh, you know, kind of as my epilogue here. Uh, if you're looking to learn how to hover, you have to measure that against every other tech that you can learn. If your movement is garbage... Learn how to move properly because that's going to save you more time on average over every seed than hovering. Yes, on the hover seeds you're going to get blown out, but um, but on average you're going to do a lot better. Uh, you know, maybe you don't know how to kill blind properly. Learn that over hovering. Um, learn room strats. Like, do you know the how to kill the Stalfos as quickly? Um, how good are you at the gauntlet? Things like that. You know, that's what you really have to consider. And ultimately, it comes down to what am I willing to spend time on? Uh, for me, I had gotten where I wanted to execution-wise that it made sense to hover. You know, that said, there there was probably some tech I could have prioritized over hovering. For example, I learned how to hover before I learned how to do spooky glitch. Um, the, Really, that should have been the other way around. Um. But yeah, Moldorm Bounce, right now I think there are more beneficial things I can learn. Um, I think it comes up so rarely 
that it's not worth me putting time into right now. Um, so if there comes a race where that is tech that I need to win, I'm happy to lose that race because I know that it's something I could have learned but opted not to. Instead, I'm putting time into this other stuff, which I think is going to directly benefit my play. Um, maybe more so than learning the Moldor Mountain. So, in any case, uh, for those of you who watched the VOD, if you actually watched all hour and 26 minutes of this VOD, uh, congratulations. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something, because I mean, ultimately that's what I'm all about. Um, I love sharing knowledge. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I will catch y'all later.